So I really like doing CPU cooler reviews, but it's not often that I get really excited about one, but this is one of those times. Howdy howdy guys, Ponchato here, and today we're checking out the Assassin 3 from Deepcool, which promises the highest TDP rating of any air cooler I've actually ever seen, let alone tested. 280 watts. But maximum heat capacity isn't the only aspect that matters with coolers, so we'll be putting it through its paces. Thanks to Deepcool for sending this over for review, and let's get started. Released in September of 2019, the Assassin 3 is one of the largest coolers I've seen, with dual towers, two 140 millimeter fans, and a depth of over 160 millimeters fully installed. In fact, it reaches slightly past the front of my mini ITX motherboard here. The height is kept in check though at only 165 millimeters tall, so it is compatible with most mid and full tower cases. And coming in at right around 100 US dollars, the Assassin 3 is definitely in the high end price range. It's compatible with AM4, LGA1151, and LGA2066, and despite its huge dimensions, it still has 54 millimeters of RAM clearance for the first two slots. You will need to move the front fan up a few fins to fit taller memory in the third or fourth slot, which this mini ITX motherboard doesn't have. It comes in a pretty big retail box with most of the specs and a couple pictures to show off the cooler. Inside you'll find the accessories box right on top. The instructions are straightforward with nice diagrams showing each step clearly. In the box you have all the mounting hardware, thermal paste, fan clips, and fan cables. Deepcool also did one thing I love. They labeled the bags of hardware for AMD sockets, Intel, or both. Nothing is more annoying than picking through one big bag of nearly identical screws to find the ones for your socket. Back to the main box, underneath the accessories is the first fan, and you can see here the interesting blade design. More on that in a bit. Also included is a long screwdriver for installation. And finally, under a thick cushion of foam, you have the second fan and the heatsink itself. Very simple styling, and it looks really nice. The heatsink is a bit of a monster. It's equipped with seven heat pipes, all nickel plated, and it's nearly 140 millimeters deep by itself. The base plate is machine polished and it's slightly convex, which should provide excellent contact pressure with the CPU. On top are cool mirror finished black fins, which cover the tops of the heat pipes and leaves a very clean polished look. Now the fans have a pretty interesting design. They're 140 millimeters with two layer blades and spoilers on the trailing edge of the fan blades. These veins are unevenly distributed to keep vibration to a minimum, which helps control noise. They're rated for 400 to 1400 RPM, which is fairly fast for 140 millimeter fans, and they use fluid dynamic bearings, so bearing life and noise are about as good as you can get. The Assassin 3 also comes with low speed adapter cables, one for each fan, that reduce the maximum RPM to 1000. It is nice of Deepcool to include those cables for those of you who want it. The corners are equipped with rubber anti-vibration pads, another feature to help keep vibration from transferring to the motherboard or case, further reducing noise. And finally, if two fans aren't enough for you, Deepcool includes a third set of fan clips for a triple fan setup. And the fans and fan clips are sized for 120 millimeter mounting holes, so just about any standard fan can be added in the back. Now I was thinking installation would be a big pain because it's a big cooler, but it was actually pretty close to the top in terms of ease and how quickly you can put it together. The first step is preparing the back plate by inserting the screws into the labeled holes. Because it uses recessed mounting holes, you need to make sure the screw hex heads are lined up correctly and sitting flush with the back. Once that's ready, the back plate screws go through the mounting holes on the motherboard and are held down with four thumb nuts all tool free to this point, so fast and easy. Next, the support bars with clear labels telling you which orientation to install them go onto those backplate screws and are held in place with four more thumb nuts. After that, a dab of thermal paste from the actually very large tube they provide, placing it right on the center of the CPU. With that down, the heatsink goes onto the processor and you alternate tightening down the crossbar until it's firmly mounted. The last bit is clipping the fans to the heatsink, which is actually a really easy process because there's a good bit of clearance between both towers. So the the second fan goes in with barely any protest. You clip the front fan on, plug in both with the PWM Y splitter, and it's good to go. Quick note here on the RAM clearance and the front fan. The fan actually completely clears the two closest RAM slots, leaving a channel for 54mm tall modules. However, because the front fan sits so far forward, it's actually over the 24 pin cable on this mini ITX motherboard, so plugging in that cable requires temporarily taking the fan off to get the power cable in. On micro ITX motherboards and larger, though, this won't be an issue. But now let's get to the benchmarks, starting with idle temperatures. Unsurprisingly, the Assassin 3 has extremely low idle temps owing to having two large 140 millimeter fans, relatively high minimum RPM of 400, and a massive dual tower heatsink. At only 2.1 degrees above ambient, it's very cool at idle. 
And despite that slightly higher than usual minimum RPM, idle noise is still essentially inaudible. The minimum noise level of my test equipment is around 29 decibels, and the actual ambient sound level is probably around 22 decibels, so you can't hear this cooler at idle unless you stick your face right next to the fan while it's running. To be fair though, most high-end coolers have an RPM range that reaches low enough to be silent or nearly silent at idle. The story is a bit different for load noise levels. At its max RPM of 1400, the Assassin's Tree clocks in at almost 52 decibels. It's not an annoying high-pitched whine like some smaller coolers, in fact, because they're 140 millimeter fans, it's not grating at all, but it is the loudest I've tested on this system by a small margin. Now here are the load temperatures, normalized to 40 decibels. At 41.1 degrees above ambient, the Assassin 3 is right in the middle of the pack of other high-end coolers I've tested. But bear in mind that deltas can only be accurate to within about one degree, so most of these can be considered roughly equivalent at 40 decibels. But here's what we really came for, load temperature at max RPM. This is where the Assassin 3 shows its teeth. At 38.6 degrees above ambient, this is the most powerful cooler I've tested, period. Nearly one degree colder than Noctua's NHU-12A and two or more degrees cooler than every other I've tested with this system. And that 38.6 degree delta above ambient correlates to a CPU load temperature of right around 64 degrees. That is extremely cool for a processor at full tilt pulling 140 watts. So Deepcool's claims of having the most powerful air cooler on the market might just have merit. The Assassin 3 is the strongest cooler I've tested, Bar none. Performance through the low and middle RPM range are about in line with other high-end air coolers I've tested, but there's just no way around physics. Two 140mm fans spinning at 1400 RPM push a lot of air, a lot more than just about any other setup. And that translates to a distinct lead in temperature. Beyond performance though, the Assassin 3 is a very high quality cooler in general. The installation process is among the best I've gone through, the parts are clearly labeled, and the instructions are very clear and easy to follow. Now you might be thinking, Ponchato, you've tested like 50 different coolers, why would you need instructions? But let me tell you, I have put together some coolers with truly awful mounting systems that are just is just so awful. I'm not gonna name names. And the reason that they were so bad is because the instructions were just not good at all. That's not the case here. But beyond that, this is actually a really easy installation process to begin with. So it is nice all around. And they actually include a screwdriver, which is another thing that I think is really underrated when it comes to installation and what they should include with coolers. On top of that, another thing I think many consumers and companies really overlook is good packaging, which the Assassin 3 has. The cooler is completely encased in foam, fairly thick foam, and both fans come in individual boxes. And when I say foam, I mean actual squishy foam, not styrofoam. That stuff just needs to not exist anymore. But anyway, there's nothing more disappointing than opening a box and seeing the product damaged from shipping. And coolers are especially vulnerable to that because fans and fins are not particularly strong. Huge bonus points to Deepcool for protecting this thing correctly. You won't have to worry about damage during shipping. So the ultimate question, is the Assassin 3 worth a hundred bucks? Absolutely. The noise performance is very good, but cooling performance is unrivaled. It might actually be king among air coolers, and it likely matches or beats most liquid coolers. That's a good return on your investment. Click the link in the description to pick one up for yourself. Hit subscribe and click that bell icon to get notified of new videos as soon as they're up. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you wanna see more, hit subscribe, and I wanna hear from you. What CPU cooler are you using right now? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, I hope I helped, and I'll see you in the next video. You know, coolers aside, I have been needing to expand my wardrobe with more Hawaiian shirts. I mean, obviously. But there are so many different designs, so many different companies. What Hawaiian shirt should I get next? Leave a comment if you have any ideas on that. Because there's a good chance I will pick the best ones and you will see them in a future video. Hawaiian shirts are tight.